Hey everyone, so I'm going to be going over kind of what streams are um, just in like a 10 minute video, okay? So streams are like iterators but with a list syntax, okay? And that, and I say that because streams and iterators both, both use what's called lazy computation. What this means is that we don't calculate the next, the next element until we need it. So for instance, for iterators, I wouldn't know what the next element was until I called next on it, until I called next on the iterator I was working with. Next calculated the next element for us. And we wouldn't have that element stored anywhere until we called next. Similarly for streams, we have this similar kind of on the spot computation, except for what we use for that is stream cutter. So in iterators, when we wanted to calculate the next element, we called next on the iterator. For streams, if we want to calculate the next element of a stream, we call stream cutter on a stream. Okay? So there's the idea there. So when I say iterators but with list syntax, I mean that um, streams literally use the same exact list syntax that we've been learning for, for Scheme. So if I wanted to make a list in stream, or if I want to make a list in scheme, I would do something like cons one, cons two, no, something like that, right? And so we had cons, which is used for making lists, car, which was used for getting the first, and cutter which was used for getting the rest. Well, we have these same exact things for making a list that we do for making a stream. So for instance, say instead I wanted this list of one and two to be a stream. So instead of doing cons, I would do cons stream. And so what cons stream Instead of making lists, constream makes streams. And then say I wanted the first of this list, or say I wanted the first of this stream, say I wanted this one, instead of calling car, I would call stream car. And that would get the first of a stream. Okay? And then similarly, if I wanted the rest of this list, say I wanted this stream over here, because you remember constream makes a stream. So if I wanted this list, I, instead of calling cutter, I would call stream cutter. And that'll get the rest of a stream. Okay? And then what about this nil? Well, the nil is the empty list, right? Instead of nil, we would have literally just the symbol, the empty stream, which is the empty stream value. So instead of having nil here, we would just put the empty string with no single quotes or anything, okay? So when I say that streams use the same list syntax, they literally use the same syntax except for they either slap stream in front or behind um, of these various things we've been using, okay? So that's the idea behind that. So what do I mean by this oh, stream cutter, I don't evaluate the rest. A really important thing to note is that constream is what's called a special form. Okay? And so if you've been, um, you know, plugging away at your scheme project, you should know that a special form is something that um, isn't evaluated um, with the traditional evaluation rules. So in our interpreter, like let's say we have, you know, plus three, three. In our evaluation, we evaluate this, and then we evaluate this, and then we evaluate this. Typical evaluation means we evaluate everything that's inside, right? So we would evaluate all of this. Constream is different. I constream stream 
1 and 2. If I constream 1 and 2 together, constream evaluates its first argument but does not evaluate its rest. So again, constream evaluates its first argument but does not evaluate its rest until it has to. So, for example, if we pull up an interpreter and say I do, um, let's define s as constream of 1. If I type in s, it does this weird hash promise thing. So this is because when I defined s, we went through the interpreter, we did define, okay, I know I'm defining this variable s. What am I defining it as? Oh, I'm defining it as this call to constream. So what constream does is it'll evaluate this and then it will not evaluate its rest. So instead of evaluating it at the time, it says, you know, I'm just going to evaluate that later, but I promise I'm going to do it. So constream, when you print out this stream we've made, it will show one because that's been evaluated and then this hash promise because the rest has not been evaluated yet. Okay. So then what is this hash promise? Well, according to this, if we look, so S right now, is one and this hash promise okay and then what is hash promise hash promise is supposedly this constream of two but we just don't know that yet because constream is not evaluated yet so let's evaluate it so how do we evaluate the rest of a stream well, we want to look at the rest, right? So for that, we just call stream cutter. So again, stream cutter will force this promise to reveal itself. It will force this constream to evaluate its rest. It's the equivalent of calling next on this stream. So if we call stream cutter, we get exactly what we would expect. We would get two, and then again, constream does not evaluate this rest. So even though this is just the empty stream, Constream doesn't care. It still just doesn't evaluate whatever is the second thing it gets. Okay? So that's good. That's exactly what we expected, right? We expected promise of constream of two in the empty stream. Constream evaluated its first argument, didn't evaluate its rest. So we got two dot hash promise. But what's this not forced business? Well, what happens if we type s back in? Weird. This changed, right? So instead of saying not forced, it now says forced. So what do you think that means? What was the difference between typing in this s and typing in this s? Well, the only thing we did was we typed in stream cutter in between. But this is kind of the key. So stream cutter forces the rest to be evaluated. So before, this promise was not forced. But since we force the rest to be evaluated, this promise has now been forced. So again, s still points to the same thing. s still points to this constream 1 and its promise, but we know that this promise has now been forced. And that's where this idea of memoization comes in. So streams are what's called memoized. So we saw this a little bit, but this basically means that once something has been calculated, it won't recalculate it again. So once a stream calculates its rest, once the stream is forced to calculate or evaluate its rest, it won't recalculate it. It will store the value of evaluating the rest. So what this means is that, well, I already, it's like you, you have that, like this bratty kid who 
who says, okay, I'm going to take out the trash. I promise I'm going to, right? So then, then you have this promise. Once you force him to actually take out the trash, he's not going to he's not gonna want to do it again, right? So it's, if you force him to do it once, basically he's not going to want to do it again. So the idea is once you force something to be calculated, so once we force this promise to be calculated, instead of the stream having to calculate it every single time you call stream cutter, because what if I keep calling stream cutter of S over and over and over again? Instead of having to recalculate things over and over and over again, it just stores, once you just evaluate something, it stores the value of that evaluation. And that's what this forced is telling you. It says, okay, next time you call stream cutter on me, I'm not gonna actually go through this evaluation thing again. This forced is telling you that I already have this value stored. So next time you call stream cutter on me, it's not going to have to reevaluate its promise. It's just going to look up its promise because it has it memoized. Okay? And remember, this promise is different from this one. So this one is not forced because we haven't forced it to evaluate the empty stream yet. So if we called stream cutter of stream cutter of s, we would get the empty stream value. And then now if we typed in stream cutter of s, we would get this promise to be forced because we just stream cluttered it. Okay? All right. So then, the takeaway from this Let me just pull these up there. Okay. So kind of the 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 takeaways from this are So streams are like more elegant iterators. They use this list syntax, right? They use this con stream one, con stream two. Same with as we were when we were making lists, we did cons one, cons two, and nil, right? The other thing is that con stream is a special form. So this gets evaluated, but this does not. This is similar to how we can have recursive functions that are defined in terms of their recursive call, right? So if I'm defining factorial, I can have a recursive call to factorial in the definition of factorial. And the reason that doesn't break is because Python does not evaluate the body of the function until we're calling it. So similarly, we can have this here. We could even have some really different stuff where we define streams in terms of themselves. And that's all because constream is a special form in which the first gets evaluated, but the rest does not. And then the other takeaway is that rest is evaluated once and never recalculated again. And that's because of this memoization. And that's basically the difference between promises being forced and not forced. Okay. So that's just a basic run through of streams.